to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Well, let's see. Where are we at? Week four. We're about week four into the new year. Yeah. Week four into the new month, week four into the new year, week four into, I don't know, I got nothing. And what have you done to change the direction of your life? Have you done anything? Have, have you taken the time to take a breath and step back from whatever 2021 has brought you? And are you looking at your future? Or are you doing the same thing that you probably have been doing all along, which is just trying to hunker down, get through the day, get through the week, and almost get through the month? And do you have one of those situations like I had many times in my life when I was younger? Yeah, there was, there was a time in my life where I had what was called more month at the end of my money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it happens to military families. It, it happens to all kinds of families. You don't have to be in the military to realize that you can spend all of your income on whatever it is you spend it on and then be staring at, you know, a couple more days left in the month and going, hmm, do I have enough food in the freezer or the refrigerator? Yeah. And the reason I bring that up is because we have a tendency to look at the very, very near-term requirements. What, what is it I need to accomplish today? Let me get those things done. And along that line, you're looking at, what do I need to accomplish this week? And maybe you've got month-time goals and things like that. And you're busy. Americans, man, y'all work really, really hard. And I know this because I have worked very, very hard in my lifetime. And sometimes you take things like retirement and you just kind of set it off on the edge or because you're so busy and your time is so consumed, you may be tempted to just say, you know what? I don't have time for retirement. I have time to think about that stuff. And what you do is you do exactly what the government wants you to do, which is create a relationship with a financial planner and send them money with the hopes that they've been educated correctly, they know how to invest your money, and that by doing that and by allocating a certain amount of your income from every paycheck or every month or however you do it, that the money you give that financial planner will grow over time. And somewhere in the future, you're going to have a big pile of money and you're going to start living off of that money and hoping you don't die before you run out of money. Now, if you're really young, like in your 20s or maybe your 30s, retirement seems like such a far, far place. It, it is such a long distance from where you're at. Because society's told us, you know, you, you retire in your 60s, maybe your 70s. And at that time, you know, you start taking your social security, which is intended to help augment your income streams, and you're going to live just fine. But here's the problem. If you're 30 years old and you intend to retire at the age of 65, that's 35 years from now. And a lot of things can happen in 35 years. I know this because I've been on this planet longer than 35 years. I have seen a lot of things happen. I have seen things happen in financial markets. I've seen things happen in real estate. But the future, man, it's, that, it's a really hard thing to predict. And if you don't have the financial literacy 
to invest correctly in assets. And those assets that you're investing in have a a specific purpose. You have a specific goal or objective for investing in those assets. If you don't know what that specific goal or objective is, or you don't know what kind of returns you're getting for those investments, you know, you just get a statement every month and you go, oh, look, there's more money in there, partly because you're probably contributing money every month to that account. But what kind of returns are you really getting? Now, stock market seems to be doing pretty well. And if you're invested in the stock market, I hope it continues to do well for you because I don't, I don't wish any harm on anybody. I really want everybody to be successful. But 35 years, man, getting back to that, that's a long time. And a lot of things can happen in 35 years. Now, when I became a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, they told me that they would help me get to retirement in five years or less. And I'll tell you, that five years, that seemed like a long period of time. But I reflect back on maybe when I was 30. What if I had known what I know now about real estate investing? What if I had correctly invested in real estate way back then? What if I achieved retirement so long ago? Man, wouldn't that be cool? Stick around. We'll talk about how to do that. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the show. So retiring in five years or less, now that kind of sounds like a pipe dream, doesn't it? I mean, doesn't that sound like something that maybe is not achievable? I mean, think about it. What has society told you to believe? Society has told you that the path to retirement is to work 35, 40, 45, or even more years to take a portion of whatever you earn. I think the the common number out there right now is maybe upwards of 15% of what you earn and to invest it, to put it aside. Maybe give it to a financial planner. Have them use their expertise to invest that money maybe into stocks or mutual funds or or whatever you agree to. To grow that money over time. And to get to a point in the future where you have plenty of money to live off of in old age. Now, one of the fallacies about thinking about yourself in old age is the fact that you have no idea, first of all, if you're even going to make it to old age. You don't know how long your life will be. I mean, you can look at how old your parents lived or how old other people in your family have lived, and that can give you an idea. And you might exceed that, or you might not. You know, you you could, and I'm, I'm not trying to be Mr. Doom and Gloom guy, You could get in a fatal auto accident that happens and you'd be done right there. Now I'm going to suggest to you that if you are open to it, if you're willing to open your mind, we can help you get retired in five years or less by investing in real estate. Now your financial planner is not going to tell you about real estate investing. And one of the reasons they don't tell you about real estate investing is, well, they're not licensed to sell you real estate. No, they're licensed to sell you stocks or bonds or other securities. They take all of these tests that are designed to make them understand the law with regards to those products that you invest in. And, you know, along that line, you would hope that they are pouring over all the financials of the businesses that they're recommending you invest in. That over time, by following a certain methodology, you should have some type of anticipated growth rate. In other words, 
the money that you're contributing to the investments gets invested correctly and you see a return on that investment over time. You know, a lot of, a lot of financial planners think that, you know, seven or 8%, maybe even 10% is a good number because what they're looking at is trying to keep you invested for the very, very long haul. But real estate investing, man, it's, it's different because real estate is designed to pay you five different ways. The most important one being cash flow. And what cash flow is, it's the money that is created by your investing in a property that you've analyzed correctly. And you have a resident living in your property, paying you a monthly rent. You in turn make the associated payments associated with the cost of operating that asset and whatever is left over is spendable cash. And when you get enough of these assets producing spendable cash and you use that spendable cash to pay for your monthly household obligations, you've effectively retired yourself. You don't, you don't have to wait until the age of 65. If you're 30 years old right now, you can do this by 2026. You can get yourself retired. Now, there's, there's no magic fairy dust or anything like that. There's nothing out there that, you know, creates a environment where you don't have to do anything. You're going to have to do something. And the first thing you have to do is you have to get yourself educated because the root cause of most of the horror stories out there with regards to investing in real estate are based on, and I'll, I'll just say it, based on the fact that People invest in real estate without understanding the entire investment process. They, they buy property for the wrong reason. They overpay for that property because they don't know. They don't fix that property up to best product conditions because they don't understand that concept. They don't market that property to find the best residents that are out there because they don't know that they can have a stringent screening criteria. Yeah, they just don't know that. They don't know that they can create a relationship with a resident that is mutually beneficial. And they don't understand how that asset pays them five different ways. They just, they don't, they don't get it. I've been that guy. Yeah, I was that guy. The first piece of investment real estate that I bought, I bought incorrectly because I did not understand what I understand now. But I'll tell you, real estate is a great way to achieve retirement. And you don't have to wait forever and a day to get the benefits of the investments. As a matter of fact, along that five-year glide path, as you acquire additional assets, your life is fundamentally changed because you're earning cash flow. You're capturing equity in the properties when you buy them correctly. You're getting the benefit of principal pay down. You get the benefit of the property going up in value. And man, the tax benefits, they're awesome. Stick around, more to come. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. So we're, we're kind of talking about where you at. Where are you at? And I don't mean geographically. I mean... Where are you at financially? Where are you at with regards to your retirement planning? If you're like most Americans, your retirement plan consists of either A, nothing, B, taking some money out of your paycheck before you even see it, and then pushing it to a financial planner and putting your hands together and praying that they're going to do good things for you, or C, something else. I mean, that's, that's really what people do for retirement in this country. You know, back in 1978, when legislation was pushed through Congress 
that allowed for the, the creation of what is now the 401k created a real boom for employers. Because prior to that, many employers, who, by the way, were loyal to their employees, would set you up on some kind of pension program. Not all of them did it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying everybody did this. But there were a lot of employers back in the day that put you on a pension plan. And the concept was you would you would work for that employer, you would build up that pension, and when it came time for you to, quote-unquote, retire, you would have the proceeds from that pension. Now, that pension was probably not designed to replace everything that you earned while you were working, but the pension itself essentially becomes a form of passive income. And it pays you on a monthly basis, or, or however they have it structured, a certain amount of money. And there are terms and conditions with regards to how long that thing pays. Well, when the 401k was created, a couple of years later, employers realized that that was a real benefit for them. Because now what they, what they were able to do was to shift the burden of retirement from them onto you. And there's a cost savings associated with that. It's a lot cheaper for employers to set up a 401k for you and even to contribute to that 401k on your behalf than it is for them to pay you a pension in regards to whatever the terms of that pension was or was to be. So in 1980, I think I was in 10th grade. That gives you an idea of how long ago this was. I was clueless. I mean, I was in high school. I didn't know anything about pensions or 401ks or anything like that. Heck, I was working a minimum wage job that was paying me, I think, $3.05 an hour while I was in high school so that I could afford to drive a car around so that I didn't have to go on a bicycle everywhere. But in 1980, all of a sudden, the burden for retirement planning shifted from your company onto you. And people are not necessarily well-equipped to invest correctly when it comes to their retirement, they're, they're just not. I mean, they don't, they don't teach you how to do it correctly in high school. They don't teach you how to do it correctly in college. Now, maybe there's some anomalies out there. But for the most part, you're basically told, find a financial planner. They're good to go. They've, they've got these series whatever licenses. They've studied the law. They understand how to correctly invest your money, in essence. Just push the money to them, and you should be good to go. And we have a tendency as people in this country to just follow the herd mentality, to just do that, just push that money across the table, put our hands together and pray that everything's going to be all right. But that financial planner, their crystal ball is no more effective than yours or mine. They're just not. They don't know what's going to happen. I mean, here, do some research on your own. Go take a look at what investment projections were to be in the year 2020. Yeah, about this time last year and even into December of the previous year, all of these organizations come out with their recommendations for their best investments, the way they think you need to invest your money. And some people read that and they go, oh, that's what I'm going to do. And some people don't even take the time to read what's out there because they're just, yeah, just pushing the money to the financial planner. I don't recall reading anything a year ago that said this country was going to be overwhelmed and go into a lockdown. I don't, don't remember reading that a year ago. Now, there may have been some news reports talking about the coronavirus and some issues going on in China, but it didn't, didn't reach my inbox and it certainly wasn't a concern of mine. And then we found out in March of last year when we went into lockdown and everybody was concerned about, what, okay, what's going on in this country? And people were prevented from going to work. People lost their jobs. I mean, there was a big economic impact. Now, if we fast forward to today, what we learned was that, yeah, people were affected and negatively affected. And the stock market, I mean, it, it took a nosedive. But it came back, dodged a bullet there. In real estate, we learned that everybody absolutely needed a place to live. And that place to live became a place to work and a place to do everything. Now, as real estate investors, we have residents that were materially affected financially by COVID-19. It happened. But 
with regards to the real estate investors I hang out with, we were actively and aggressively looking for solutions to help these people out. And when we found one, we shared one with each other. We shared it. We told everybody what was going on. Because at the end of the day, not only do we want to take care of the people that are living in our properties, we also wanted to make sure the investment was still sound and solid. I'll tell you what, we did a good job. We did a really good job. We come back from the break. I'm going to share with you somebody's best investments for 2021 list. Stick around. with the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. We're here to answer your questions and help you become financially free. Welcome back to the show. So Bankrate published a list of nine items, and they believe these nine items are, in their opinion, the best investments you can make in 2021. Yeah. 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 Now they don't necessarily get into details with regards to why these are good investments by age group or savings rate or net worth or anything like that. I mean, they they talk a little bit about certain people who might be interested in less risky investments. And then they talk about people that might be interested in investing in things that take on a little more risk or more potential for volatility. But here's what I find real interesting about this list. Of the, I don't know, 10 or 15 websites that I looked at, this is the only one that actually acknowledged that renting property to people for investment might be a good investment strategy. Every time I look at these things, it's usually, you know, things to do with savings accounts or things to do with CDs or things to do with bonds or index funds or mutual funds or, or things like that. They, they never, ever get to the concept that investing in residential income producing properties might be the way to go. So when I looked at bank rates list of their, their nine things that they consider to be the best investments for you to make in 2021, that's their recommendation. The first two things on the list are high yield savings accounts and certificates of deposits. And when I clicked on the links within the article, I was seeing some, wow, some some great interest yields for you. I was seeing things like 0.5%, 0.6% in high yield savings accounts. Yeah, like a $25,000 investment might make you 150 bucks over the year. Yeah, might. CDs do better. I was looking at stuff that, you know, we're offering 0.85% interest. I mean, those are going to produce more money for you. Now, obviously, CDs are, are a little less liquid because you basically say, all right, I'm going to impound that money for a certain period of time. Whereas savings accounts, you can pretty much pull your money out when you want. Now, the other things that they have on their list are different types of bond funds, government bond funds, municipal bond funds short-term corporate bond funds. Now, bonds have a tendency to be a less risky investment. They, they just do. It's just the way they're made. They also don't pay a lot in the form of a return, but they tend to be a more conservative investment, something that somebody investing their money into can expect a certain rate of return. Now, the other things that they listed were index funds. Yeah, they like the five or the S and P 500 index fund, the dividend stock funds, and the NASDAQ 100 index funds. And they like these because they, they tend to be a little bit more stable, especially in the index funds, because the index funds have a tendency to, well, you know, if you've got one stock within that fund that takes a nosedive, usually the other stocks help to bolster it so you, you don't get damaged too much. I mean, that's the way it works out. And with di dividend stock funds, which technically is not an index fund, but dividend stocks will actually pay you a return 
quarterly or annually or monthly, depending on how they're structured. So you actually get some, some cash flow. But depending on how you're invested, that cash flow may have to go right back into that investment account. And that leaves us with rental housing. The one thing on this list that makes me go, wow, may, maybe we're opening some eyes up out there. Now, let me just read to you what they say about rental housing. Okay, They say rental housing can be a great investment if you have the willingness to manage your own properties. I'm not sure what that has to do with anything. Well, let's see what they say. And with Mortgage rates hitting all-time lows recently. Yeah, that's true. It could be a great time to finance the purchase of a new property. Well, I agree with that. Though the unstable economy may make it harder to actually run it. Since tenants may be more likely to default due to unemployment. I think I hear what they're saying there, but it's, it's a bunch of gobbledygook. They go on to say this. They say, to pursue this route, you'll have to select the right property. Okay, I agree with that. Finance it or buy it outright. Yeah, all right. I don't know about buying it outright. Maintain it. Okay. Well, actually, what you should be doing is you should be fixing everything that could potentially go wrong with that property. And then deal with tenants. I don't know why everybody is so concerned with the concept of dealing with tenants. The people that rent my properties are wonderful people. And I gave them wonderful properties to rent. See, I went into these properties and I made sure that everything that could go wrong in the next five years was addressed. So I, I don't deal with late night phone calls. I don't deal with any of the gobbledygook or the horror stories that you've probably heard about because I've been educated on how to do this correctly. Let me get back to what they say here. They say, you can do very well if you make smart purchases. Yeah, I agree. However, you won't enjoy the ease of buying and selling your assets in the stock market with a click or a tap of the internet enabled device. Worse, you might have to endure the occasional 3 a.m. call about a broken pipe. Okay. You know what? There's not enough scare stuff there to scare me away from real estate. Because when you invest in real estate, you invest for the long term. It's not like investing in the stock market where you wake up one morning and go, oh, our stock is down $4. Let's sell it. No. You invest in an asset that is paying you five different ways. It's producing monthly cash flow. And that's the king. If a property doesn't produce monthly cash flow, you don't invest in it. Pass on that property. If it doesn't have the potential to give you monthly cash flow, walk away. There are plenty of other properties that do. Real estate has a tendency to double in value every 20 years. Okay, So that means the potential for property values to go up is there. Now, it doesn't always happen. I mean, 2008, the, the market suffered, but it bounced back. You get the ability when you purchase correctly to capture equity in the property, meaning when you buy wholesale and you repair correctly, you have a difference between your all-in dollar amount in that investment and what the true value of that property is. You gain wealth right there. I mean, we have members that, I mean, that's one of the things they like to target. They like to see sixty dollars or $80,000 worth of equity in every deal they do. You get the benefit of principal pay down because you want to leverage your properties correctly, because when you leverage correctly, you get the better returns on the money you have invested into those assets. And what principal pay down does for you is it allows you to build equity every month when that mortgage payment is paid, because a mortgage payment is comprised of principal and interest components. And by the way, the interest is a business expense that you write off as a cost of doing business. And then there's there's all the tax benefits. I mean, real estate investors pay the least amount of taxes on their investments due to things like depreciation and doing 1031 exchanges. I mean, it's really cool stuff. So it gets me back to my original premise. I mean, we're in the fourth week of the year. What have you done to at least investigate finding a different path than the one you're on? Because the one you're on, it just may not be working for you. So do this. Go to freeworkshoplivestream.com. That's freeworkshoplivestream.com. Sign up for one of our free workshops. And we'll show you the methodology on how we invest. It will change your life. And remember, it's not the money. It's the lifestyle. 
The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.